Among comic book fans, there are a lot of fun kind of debates that people like to make comparing different aspects of the big two publishers, DC and Marvel. One that we've always loved is who in DC Comics could wield Mjolnir? from Marvel Comics. Thor's hammer Mjolnir is almost like, well, it is a mythical weapon, but it's almost the stuff of, like, folklore at this point. You know what I mean? It's almost like King Arthur's Excalibur. Only the chosen and worthy ones can wield as powerful a weapon as this. Yeah, and there's something kind of hopeful and endearing and really interesting about that. For a long time after Thor's inception in uh, 1963 or something, he was the only character that could wield Mjolnir. And then they just started, like, letting, Every, letting anybody pick it yeah. up. Bro, like, Venom picked it up two years ago? Get the Get out of here. Yeah, you, Spider-Man's picked it up. You know, even in what? the movies. Yeah, I had a comic as a kid where he goes to Asgard and he picks it up and he gets the Thor helmet, like, electrocuted onto no, it. No, okay, listen. I'll put it up here for listen, you guys. I might get flack for this. There is no way Pete is worthy. But in today's video, we're going to talk about who in DC can wield me old. Hmm. 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 Guys. I'm Thomas. I'm Merlin. Together, we're the Comic Lads. Let's get into it. But before we get started, guys, we want to hear from you. Question of the week, which characters from DC Comics do you think could wield Mjolnir? If you guys think of any more characters that you think maybe we missed, please let us know in the comments down below. Also, guys, don't forget to hit the like button. It really helps us out. We're a small growing channel, working on this channel weekly along with our jobs. So every like goes such a long way. Also, consider subscribing. We love interacting with you guys. Become a fellow lad. Become one of the lads. Now, before we get into our picks, let's try and quantify what makes one worthy. As the enchantment of Odin on the hammer goes, whosoever holds this hammer, if they be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. With great power comes great worthiness. Yeah, worthiness. Fuck. <laughs> With great power comes great worthiness. That's what it boils down to. That sucks, by the way. Yeah, no. <laughs> Let's get that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Comic Lads merchandise. You know, there's not like a list of qualities, but I feel like if you're an insecure character or like a really arrogant character, you know, someone like a Hal Jordan, you're not going to be able to lift the hammer. I, I think it all boils down to whenever you use your power, it needs to be for the betterment of other people. You know, someone like Peter Parker, for example, why he shouldn't wield Mjolnir. Yeah. Yes, he's such a good person and he's always going to help the little guy, but he's also used his powers for completely selfish reasons before. Yeah. You know? When you boil it down to its core, I think you need a purely good hearted person. But guys, let's get into our actual list. Who in DC Comics could lift Mjolnir? Thor's hammer. First on our list, we have Billy Batson. Yeah. Little disclaimer, we're not going to talk about the new 52 version of him who who's like a, a terrible whack kid. Billy Batson in his core has always been just a shining light. A pure of heart kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? That uses his powers. I mean, he's basically every kid's fantasy. Let's yeah. be real. You yes. know what I mean? You get superpowers, you get super jacked, you get the girl, <laughs> you beat up the bad guys. Yep. You know what I mean? And I think because he's a child, you have that kind of innocence. And, and those like pure ideals that aren't muddled by, you know, being an adult and learning Paying how, the, taxes. how the world <laughs> is exact <laughs> you know. There's that incredible episode of Justice League Unlimited where he fights Superman because, quote-unquote, quoting Captain Marvel, you guys don't act like heroes anymore. Damn, man. It took, like, a little kid to tell these heroes that they got too big for their britches, you know? He's definitely, like, the humbling factor of the DC universe, you know what I mean? And I think he appreciates the power that he has. Very much so. I mean, outside of, like, a couple kid gags, I don't think he misuses it. And that's a great point that you said that he's not selfish with his power, and he's so selfless with his power that in new iterations, he shares it with his foster family. Which, you know, I've never been like the biggest fan of all of them getting powers. Yeah, I feel like it kind of makes Shazam a bit less, or Billy a bit less special. But the idea that he finally finds a family that he has that loves him, and he just shares this great thing about him with them, it's it's beautiful. Like we said, selfishly, maybe we might not want him to share the power, but he does. And that's what makes it so special. That kind of just gave me a whole new perspective on Shazam. I'd share my powers with you, bro. If I got them, dude. come on. Oh my god, yeah, dude. Uh, Ten billion dollars or get superpowers with your boy? Dude. Come on, dude. We would be fucking flying, dude. Oh, 
Well, it depends what power, but yeah. you know, if we have, like, Huey's teleportation from the boys, I, I don't know if I'd... I, you know, it's just <laughs> neither of us have that effort. Maybe, maybe I'd want the $10 billion. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. <laughs> All right, next up. This one I feel like might be a controversial pick for some. We got Wonder Woman. You weren't feeling this one so much because Wonder Woman has been very brutal and violent in certain iterations in the past, but I think those were real misunderstandings and kind of, like, misuses and mis mistreatments of her character. At her core, she is a warrior, but a warrior for truth and peace. Wonder Woman doesn't love to fight. She doesn't love to kill and to hurt. She does it because she has to. And whenever she has the choice, she'll choose not to. And she has lifted Mjolnir in a crossover before. What do you think, though? Okay, so I'm gonna say my piece. Sure. Because I've never really been that exposed to Wonder Woman, as you know. Sure. The only exposure I've had is, is some of the worst versions of her. It's the <laughs> worst. I mean, All-Star Batman and Robin. Oh my god, dude. I don't even... It's like one of the worst character depictions of anyone that I've ever seen. Frank Miller, I don't know what he did to her. Yeah, no, like Frank Miller deserves all of his accolades and stuff for writing some of the best comic books ever made. I'm gonna say he's written the worst Wonder Woman characterization F. And not only that, but my only other exposure to her has really just been Injustice. Where she's, she's like almost worse than Superman. She's sometimes. like psychotic and almost like pulling Superman's strings yeah, at the it's such a gross interpretation of her character where she's like, oh, finally, you're like the man I've wanted you to be. And you're like, hell are you even talking? Yeah, making her way too brutal and way too, like, over-sexualized, you know what I mean? Yeah, and like, really gross. And kind of manipulating him through, like, their sexual relationship. It's oh, just yeah. black. Well, because they're together in uh, Injustice 2, right? I will say one iteration of her that I really do like is how she appears in Blackest Night. Yeah, where she becomes uh, a star sapphire. So so obviously she is the embodiment of love and caring for all who are around her. She has love for everyone. I don't think there's a, an ounce of selfishness or arrogance or even insecurity in her. She is probably one of the most like mentally stable, strong characters. Yeah, I'd like to see. think like if there was an orphan or something on the street, she would like take him or her in and like feed them chicken soup. 100%. Whereas like Batman would like make them into Robin or something <laughs> and like pour that the fight crime. She has that caring heart factor to her that, you know, spreads to everyone that's around her. Okay, number two. This is gonna be very divisive and a bit controversial, I'm gonna say. I feel like this is like one of the purest, goodest characters in DC. I think he is, but I think the general public love who his mentor is so much more than they love him. Sure. That they might be offended that he's not picked. And we will dress that. Yes. Because our number two pick is, is Dick Damian Green. Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. No. Bro, there's no shot. No. It is Dick Grayson. Yes. Let's talk about the elephant in the room before we get into Dick Grayson. It's not Batman. Dude, there is no way in hell Batman could ever lift me all near. Batman's my favorite character in fiction. Yeah. He's the GOAT. There is no fucking way he can move this hammer an inch, bro. He is such a deeply flawed controlling, manipulative person, e even though at his core, he is good. And he is like, like Iron Man in the movies, like he would always lay his life on the line and make the sacrifice play. But he is not pure of heart like that. Yeah, and it's not even just our opinion, you know, even in something like Batman Hush, when he's talking about how he's gonna beat Superman, you know, he says deep down, Clark is a good person and deep down I'm not. Yeah, I mean, he's willing to do, like you said, those sacrifice plays, but he's also willing to get his hands dirty in certain yes. scenarios. That's such a great line because I don't think he's right in how he describes himself because deep down we know he is a good person, but the fact that he doesn't think he is is a criterion for why I don't think he should be able to wield it. He's almost like ashamed of himself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And ashamed of what he is and what his past is. But let's get into Dick Grayson. I think we got that out of the way, you know, address the elephant in the room. Dick Grayson? We did a whole video talking about who we thought is the greatest Robin. Mm. And I will say Tim Drake is my personal favorite. I know Dick Grayson is yours. Yeah. But undeniably, Dick Grayson 
is one of the most pure of heart characters in all of the DC universe. Yeah, he's such a shining ray of light and hope. Dick Grayson has always been a feet on the grounds character. Mm -hmm. and he was always level headed. I feel like some of the Justice League members almost have become like mythical gods in their own universe. Yeah, there's too much of a disconnect with them and, and the rest of the people on Earth. Exactly, but Dick is still so human. He's such a good person at heart. He's always had the optimism yeah. like no other hero really has, you know what I mean? But also, just to connect it to the Batman thing, Dick is everything Batman wishes he could be. And it's not that Batman's jealous of him. I think that's a success that we can attribute to Batman, where Batman's number one goal adopting Dick Grayson was making it so that he wouldn't end up like him. He succeeded in that. The whole point of Dick Grayson is that he got over the trauma and it made him a better person. Definitely. Even despite the trauma, he puts on a smile, yeah. you know what I mean, and goes out and tries to better the world in whatever way he can. You know, I'm thinking about this comic book run you've recently lent me by Tom Taylor, uh, Nightwing Leap into the Night or something like that. Leap into the Light. Le Leap into the Light. It's called, yeah. In that story, he gets in Alfred's will, billions of dollars. Yeah, and what does he do? He puts like all of it into the Pennyworth Foundation to basically rebuild Bloodhaven for the poor and the disenfranchised and the orphans of the city. Yeah, just make everything he possibly can better. In his own words in that book, he even says like, look, I have a chance to make make real good change and I'm gonna take it. Long lasting change that isn't like me beating people up. He's there as Dick Grayson as well as Nightwing yeah. cleaning up the streets. Yeah, and as soon as Dick gets any kind of, you know, substantial inheritance, he's like, no, this is going back into my city. And all that to say, he could definitely wield me only. He's like a joke cracker, you know, he's, he can be kind of uh, a little douchey at times, but he is so pure hearted and so good. I think he's definitely a candidate for someone who could lift me only. Guys, I mean, you know, who do you think is number one? Yeah, it's all been leading to this. Yeah. It's, it's very obvious, but I'm going to say our number one pick still in the general public eye is a character that's very underrated. Yes. Obviously, we're talking about Superman. Something that I like about Superman is kind of ironic because he's an alien mm. is that he is by far the most human character in the DC universe. Yeah. Well, that's because he was raised by like two of the greatest people probably to ever be born in the DC universe. His Earth parents, Jonathan and Martha Kent, raised him to care about his fellow man, to want to help in any way possible. And you just don't see that anymore. Man. I'm gonna asterisk that though. Yeah. And I'm gonna say you don't see that with characters that are as powerful as Superman is. Yes. You know, something like our the last person on our list, Dick Grayson, he's a pure of heart person, but like we said then, he's a dude. He's a dude and his feet are on the ground. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of these characters, when they're this as powerful as Superman, I mean, there's few characters that are as powerful as him. Yeah, but like on that kind of level of powers. Yeah, they become slightly disconnected and maybe they're still heroes and they help out, but they don't have that pure, pure humanity to them that Clark slash Superman has. They don't. And there's really no other character like that. I have to say, like, just on a personal note, yeah. I used to be a bit of a Superman hater. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just thought what most people think, unfortunately, which is Superman is a bit boring, he's too powerful, you can't make good stories out of him, there's nothing relatable. Full credit to you, you lent me about like a dozen Superman stories. Mm -hmm. He's my number two hero, bridging on number one now. Yeah, man. The fact that they're that powerful, it doesn't make them boring, it adds to their struggle. Definitely. Because they need to figure out how to live and just how to be normal, which is a huge part of, you know, Superman coming of age stories. Yeah, and I will say, the stories that had the greatest impact on me aren't even the ones showcasing the extent of his powers. No, they're the ones showcasing who he is deep down as a person. Who he is and what the human race can be. Yes. What humans can be. You know, whether it's going across an entire fucking universe and up in the sky just to save one single little girl. One little girl. You know what I mean? Or something like All-Star where he makes a sacrifice play and saves the entire Earth. And all the best Superman stories, if they're done well, have left me feeling inspired to be a better person. Always. And then his powers are just icing on the cake. It's just like cool shit for you to see while your heart is being moved by this character. There is not an ounce of any kind of bad qualities in him. He just wants to help always. Yeah, he could definitely lift me on there. I he mean, has. 
No, nah, dude, dude, there's a picture of it. Yeah, it's true, and like a DC Marvel crossover. Yeah, and he's holding it. Cap's shield also. That's so sick. It's so yeah. sick. I mean, let's be real, there's no real need for him to wield Mjolnir. No, it's just it's, so awesome. It is really awesome. But guys, that's it for our list. Superman is at the very, very top. Some of the characters you might be able to debate us, I don't think you can debate Superman. Guys, please let us know who do you think could lift Mjolnir in the DC universe. Do you agree with our picks? Do you have any alternatives? Please let us know. We love engaging with you guys and we read pretty much every single comment that's posted. As always, you know, be sure to like, subscribe if you haven't already. Like you said in our previous video, there's like 90% of our viewers that haven't subscribed yet come on guys you, you know what to do hit the subscribe button come on. join the journey hit the little bell you know so you get notified and as always guys thank you so much for watching we'll see you next week we love you we love you dearly peace peace peace, peace. nice that's kind of nice that was nice <laughs>